Hey students, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a paint program in P5 that looks something like this. You can see I have a small purple circle that's following the mouse wherever it goes on the screen. And when I click, it clears the screen and I'm back to drawing on a clean canvas. So let's get started and let me show you how this is done. Okay, I've got a brand new sketch started in P5, and I'm going to come up and change the name of it here. Let's call this Paint Program. One thing I want you to do in all of your sketches here in P5 is to add your name in a multi-line comment. The way we do that is a forward slash asterisk. Uh, go ahead and put your name, and then on a new line, uh, you can go ahead and put the date, and then to end a comment, put asterisk and forward slash. Now as you can see we have the setup and draw function. These are part of every sketch that you create in P5, but we haven't really talked about what those functions do. The setup function is a function that's called automatically by P5 every time you start a program, but it's only called once. And as you can imagine by the name, it sets up the program. So in this function we do things like create the canvas and other things that we will get to later. Um, and uh, just it's important to know that this function runs once at the beginning of your program and only once. I've just gone ahead and added a comment here just so you can remember what the setup function does. Now I've added another comment here right in front of the draw function. The draw function, like the setup function, is called automatically by P5 when you start your program. However, it doesn't run just once, it runs continuously. It acts like a loop that continuously draws things on the canvas. It's important that you understand how these two functions run as we continue to learn how to use P5. Okay, let's come up here and change the size of our canvas. We'll go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna come down here into our draw function and let's use a new command we haven't used yet, ellipse. The ellipse command is a lot like the circle command, however, it can be used to draw ovals as well, so it's a little bit more flexible. Let's go ahead and draw our first ellipse here at 100, 100, and uh, a diameter of 30. Let's go ahead and hit our play button and turn on the auto refresh, and we see we have a 30 diameter white circle here at 100 over, 100 down from the upper left corner. I think it would be nice to give our circle a little bit better color. So I'm going to go ahead and change this 150, 25, and 175. And that will give me a nice purple color. It could also be nice to make the background not just a gray color, but provide three colors here in the background command so that we get a different color. Let's go with uh, 220. 250 and 255. That will give us a nice light blue. Let's save our program at this point. A keyboard shortcut for saving your program is Control S. Now in this program, I want to introduce to you the concept of variables. A variable is a place in memory used to store a value, and that value can change as the program runs. Up to this point, everything we've done with P5 has been pretty static. We've just drawn something on the canvas, and it hasn't really changed uh, for the duration of the program. We're going we're gonna to do something a little different now by using two built-in variables that are part of P5. They are variables that hold the position of the mouse wherever it is on the canvas. Let me demonstrate. Here we see we're drawing the ellipse at X100 and Y100. Uh, I can use a variable called mouse x. Note that it is a little m and a big x. And also note that it turns color. It becomes kind of a pink color when I type it in here. And that means it's a keyword. It's a reserved word in P5 and has a special meaning. And because I'm using that now instead of 100 for the x location, if I come over here and start moving my mouse across the screen, you're going to see that the little purple circle starts to follow the mouse on the x-axis. If I put my 100 back in there and change the Y to mouse Y, again that's a capital Y, 
Now we see that wherever I move the mouse on the y-axis, the little purple circle follows it in that direction. So as you can imagine, if I use mouse X for the X and mouse Y for the Y, now wherever I put the mouse on both axes, that purple circle will follow the movement of the mouse. Pretty cool. One thing that can be really helpful is to know exactly what values are being stored in those variables mouse X and mouse Y. One thing you can do is use a command called console.log, and inside the parentheses here we can put mouse X and a plus and a quote with a colon, and then after the quote, another plus and mouse Y. What we're doing here is we are displaying or logging to the console the uh, values of mouse X and mouse Y, and we're just appending the uh, colon in between them. That's why we need to use the plus symbol on either side of these quotes. And uh, what we're going to do is display these values in the console. Now the console, if you haven't noticed, is right down here at the bottom. And uh, let's go ahead and run the program here. And now you see that 0, 0 is being displayed here. And that's because the circle is up here in the upper left corner, and that is 0, 0, or the origin of the canvas. But as I move the mouse over the canvas and begin to move it away towards the center of the screen, again, remember this was an 800 by 800 canvas, we see now those values are both about 400 or so, I'm about in the center of the screen here. And if I move all the way down to the lower right corner, I should get to about 800 and 800 on the X and the Y. So now we can see the value of, that's being stored in mouse X and mouse Y by using console.log. If you want to clear the console, clear it here. And if you don't really need those uh, values to be displayed in the console, you can comment them out temporarily. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this lesson, the function called draw is being looped continuously as the program runs. So let's take a little bit closer look at what's happening. Each one of these three lines is being called one after the other. First, the background is being drawn with a particular color. Then the fill is being set. Then an ellipse is being drawn at mouse X and mouse Y. However, what if we take this background command here and remove it from the draw function and instead place it up here in the setup function. Now remember, I said earlier, the setup function is only called once. And so if we set the background color in the setup function and set it just once, then when we begin to call the draw function, we get this result instead. And that's because we're setting the fill and drawing the ellipse, but we're not drawing the background over and over again. And so this is beginning to give us that paint program that we were trying to create. So this is beginning to look pretty cool, but one thing we can do here to change the painting effect of our paintbrush is to change the opacity of our fill when we draw the circle. What do I mean by that? Here we have the fill command and we have three numbers. We've learned earlier that those stand for the R, G, B, or red, green, and blue values of our purple circle. And what we can do here is add a fourth argument. And a fourth argument in a fill command will set the alpha channel, um, or what's also known as the transparency level. If I put 255 there, which will mean fully opaque, then it really doesn't have any effect. If I set this to zero, actually now I'm not gonna have any fill just the outline. And so if I go to about 100, what we see now is that I get, when I first start to draw that shape, it's a little bit transparent. If I move slowly, it has more time to build up the color in that spot, and I get a nice dark color. Experiment with a value here that you like in terms of the amount of transparency. Pretty cool. Now that we're drawing our circle with a little bit of transparency, the stroke or black line that's around the outside of the circle has become a little bit more apparent. I want to teach you one more command that can take away that stroke. There is a command here called no stroke, 
Notice that it's spelled with camel case. Camel case means you start with lowercase letters, and then any subsequent words start with an uppercase letter. So no stroke with a set of parentheses and a semicolon. Now we've just turned off the stroke for any other shapes that are drawn from that point down. And so now it looks a little bit more just like I'm painting with color now that I've removed the stroke. Okay, we are pretty close to having a finished paint program, but I want to add one more feature. As demonstrated at the beginning, when I click on the canvas, I want the drawing to disappear. Right now when I click, nothing happens. So we need to add what's called an event listener. I'm going to go ahead and add a comment, event listener, and we want to listen for mouse pressed. In order to do that, we're going to create a new function called mouse pressed. This is a built-in function that's part of P5. Anytime you add a function, you use keyword function. You give the name of the function, which is mouse pressed. Notice that it's a small m and a big P. A set of parentheses that identifies it as a function, and then a set of curly braces that mark the beginning and the end of the function. Super important that you always match your curly braces Whenever you have an opening curly brace, you always have to have a closing one. Now the way this works is this function sits there doing nothing until the mouse is pressed. And when it is, we want the background to be drawn again to cover up our drawing. So let's go ahead and copy our background code here and paste it into our event listener function. Now when we run the program, we can paint and draw with our paint program and if we don't like our drawing we can just click and all of a sudden our drawing is gone. Really what's happened is that the background has just been replaced over that drawing and we can draw again. When we click the background is drawn again covering up our drawing and there you go we have a paint program. One thing I want to do in this program is to add a title to the program and so here in our draw function. Let's go ahead and uh, set the fill to black and use the text command to write paint program by, put your name. The text command requires that we also put the X and the Y. We want it near the bottom of the page. So since our canvas is 800 high, let's put it down at like 770. And we see it's pretty small down there. Uh, so there is another command that we can use, text size, and we can put in there 24, and that will give us the size we want. There we go. Now our program has a title, and it's using a different color fill so that when we draw, we can still see it. It looks great. There you go. That's the end of this program. We now have a simple paint program that we can use to paint on a canvas. And uh, we also have created an event listener that listens for mouse pressed. And when it does, it redraws the background. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this useful. Stay tuned for the next video.